Your Excellencies, honored guests, and distinguished participants from around the world. It is a distinct pleasure to welcome you from the four corners of the world here to the United States and to this fourth annual Global Peace Convention. I would like to extend my heartfelt appreciation to our esteemed Georgia Senator Emmanuel Jones and Dr. Robert Schuler for hosting and serving as co-chairmen of this convention. Could we give them a round of applause? <laughs> to the members of our Global Leadership Council and to many distinguished Latin American presidents and to the dignitaries of 40 nations assembled here today, thank you for your visionary leadership and ownership over this mission of peace. The Global Peace Convention started in Southeast Asia in 2009 in Manila, the capital of the Philippines. We then moved to the continent of Africa in Nairobi, Kenya, where President Kibaki was patron of that convention. Next, in 2011, we were in Northeast Asia in my birthplace and home of Seoul, Korea. And finally this year, we have arrived in the Western Hemisphere to my adopted home here in the United States. Thus, this convention brings together the fruits of those past conventions, as well as numerous festivals, service and community development projects, character development programs, and the many partnerships that we had the great fortune to initiate and develop in all those many different countries around the world. Once again, welcome all, and thank you very much. A round of applause. The theme of this year's convention is moral and innovative leadership, building healthy families, ethical societies, and a culture of global peace. It is a particularly fitting that we should be celebrating this theme for our gathering here in this great city of Atlanta, Georgia, a place rich with history, faith, and more importantly, as a center of the civil rights movement. As a man of faith and student of history, I have always looked at that movement, not just as a struggle for civil rights, but as America's great awakening of the 20th century. One of the great spiritual movements of American history, which were the harbinger of transformations to come. Today, we must rekindle that spirit and take it to a still a higher level, laying out a path not only for American renewal, but for a hemispheric and even global awakening that will offer a new perspective of peace and harmony for our time. Ladies and gentlemen, the United States may be the world's sole remaining superpower, but we need to be clear about where America's true strength lies. It is not in U.S. military might, greatly stretched today in Iraq and now in Afghanistan. Nor is it in America's geopolitical and economic dominance now challenged by its debt crisis and questions about its leadership in the Middle East, Asia, and the international community. I believe that America's true strength lies in its moral authority as a nation rooted in spiritual principles and values which has championed fundamental human rights and freedoms around the world as well as here in the United States. This is a nation with the aspiration to be one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. It was this vision that inspired millions from around the world, regardless of race, ethnicity, nationality, and religion to make that long and perilous journey to a new nation filled with hope and opportunity. In order for the United States to exercise genuine global leadership in today's more complex and fragmenting world, it must rekindle that position of true servant leadership and offering its inclusive national promise to the world. Now more than ever, 
the United States must look to its unique founding ideals as a basis for a new renaissance in the 21st century, rooted in universally accepted aspirations, principles, and values. Just as the European Renaissance gave rise to the Reformation, Enlightenment, and thereby laid the groundwork for our modern world, a new global movement for change needs to arise, anchored in the past, but bringing a fresh new vision for the future. This is a time for bold leadership that is guided by a universal aspiration and tied to time-tested principles and values that form the basis of our common humanity. In the course of the last century, the United States has been the catalyst for positive change around the world, challenging European colonial imperialism and creating international assemblies to foster peace through dialogue and reason. The League of Nations after the First World War and the United Nations after the Second World War were created as a result. During the Cold War era, American leadership and faith in human rights and freedoms paved the way to the eventual collapse of totalitarian communist regimes around the world. The historic role of the United States in shaping and then leading the world to where we are today is undisputed. The question then is, what should be America's role going forward as we look to this new century and the challenges, the new challenges that it brings? As a concerned citizen and a peace advocate, I see three major themes that the U.S. and the global community needs to address as a global leader in the 21st century. First, deals with the religious dimension of U.S. engagement in the Middle East and the contemporary challenge of sectarian-fueled extremism and violence. The second is near and dear to my heart as a Korean American, namely the resolution of the Korean conflict. The final theme addresses the need for a greater hemispheric integration between the United States and its southern neighbors in this era of the Pan-Pacific Rim. The current approach to addressing terrorism over the last 11 years has embroiled the United States in the ever-changing politics of the Muslim world where religion and tribal affiliations are very powerful and real social, social economic and political realities. How does the United States meet the threat of Islamist extremism without alienating the mainstream Muslims and igniting a wider conflict along religious lines? Moreover, the rise of potential nuclear Iran with its regional ambitions, coupled, while, coupled with the instability of the Middle East, makes for an even more volatile situation. Further complicating matters is North Korea's link to the Iranian nuclear program and its role as the armed supplier to rogue regimes around the world. Given these challenges, the resolution of the Korean conflict is of paramount global importance. What should the U.S. and international policy be towards the Korean Peninsula, given the threats to regional stability and international security? Finally, there is the question of the future of the Americas. It is clear that the Hispanic community will be an ever more influential and important part of the domestic, social, political, and economic life here in the United States. Whether considering immigration, socioeconomic opportunity, or regional trade and partnerships, it seems clear that the future of the U.S. and the hemisphere as a whole lies with greater integration and cooperation. This becomes even more important given the rise of China and other emerging states as a, as a significant competitor and growing force on the global stage. 
Ladies and gentlemen, let me repeat. To provide global leadership in meeting these challenges, the United States must rekindle its founding ideals and find in them the inspiration for dealing with today's challenging realities. This nation was given birth through the declaration of certain universal transcendent principles and values that uplifted human dignity and freedoms. Those self-evident truths form the foundation of a new nation in which a common commitment to share I shared ideals and values bound us together as one nation under God. I have traveled widely around the world and gained a unique perspective that has enabled me to appreciate the, the, the distinctive genetic code of America's greatness. As a student of history, I've often wondered and asked myself, what is the essence of the American dream? I came to the conclusion that the American dream is not about the democratic political process or the free market economic system. Processes and systems are external structures and succeed or fail depending on the spirit and values that infuse them. The secret to America's success lies in the vitality of the spiritual principles and values that motivated the American experiment and were poured into the structures of that new nation. They are conveyed in the Declaration of Independence as a secular document that nevertheless enshrines spiritual principles as the for, at, that form the basis of our modern notion of human rights. Its ringing words declare, thank you. Its ringing words declare, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, and that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. They make clear that those rights and human dignity, freedom, and the responsibility that flows from them are not granted by any human power or institution, but come as our natural heritage from our Creator and therefore cannot rightfully be abridged or denied to any man or woman. They are a shield against tyranny and corruption. In this context, the First Amendment to the Constitution is, the, is of particular importance, guaranteeing, guaranteeing the freedom of expression and of religion. In so doing, it sets a precedence that has made a global impact protecting and promoting essential freedoms of conscience, worship, and speech everywhere. It is in these core principles that America's greatness lies. It was to them, for example, that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. appealed in his powerful and charismatic speeches that transcended sectarian religious divides and spoke to a larger humanity in reference of a dream in which all the different races can come together as one human family. He said that the civil rights movement was not just a struggle for African American equality, but the pursuit of timeless ideals rooted in the fundamental principles that shaped America's foundings. In other words, its spiritual principles and values. This moment may prove to be a historic crossroads for the United States and for the world. The time is ripe for a new spiritual awakening that galvanizes the community of righteous and faithful citizens around universal principles and shared values. Not just here in the United States, but throughout the Western Hemisphere and around the world. In other words, humanity needs a vision 
that is more powerful than the forces driving, it, driving us apart. American founding ideals gave rise to the vision of one nation under God. A nation where people of diverse racial, ethnic, cultural, and religious backgrounds could live together and create a model for a unified world. The time is ripe for this model to be expanded to the global level. From the nation to the world. A, a spiritual vision for humanity is the objective needed for these changing times. Such a vision is found in the simple but profound idea that all human beings everywhere, regardless of race, ethnicity, nationality, or religion, are all part of one family under God. Thank you. Political authority cannot mandate, nor can money buy the virtues needed to resolve conflicts and build an ethical society and a world of peace. We need a new framework rooted in our shared spiritual aspirations and principles, and that gives rise to values needed to build peace. What do I mean by moral and innovative leadership? First, it has to promote a greater good that can benefit not only the individual, but the larger society, nation, and eventually the world. This is the moral orientation of leadership I am describing. For it to come to fruition, it has to be guided by a vision or aspiration and a clear set of irrevocable universal principles and values that could have the breadth and the depth to encompass the diversity of the human family. Secondly, it has to harness mankind's natural creative need to advance and develop the human condition. This is the innovative component of leadership. As all of you know, every culture has examples of extraordinary men and women who propelled humanity forward in fields of philosophy, ethics, the sciences, athletics, and the cultural arts. By freely exercising their God-given talents, even to the point of challenging existing paradigms. Although many faced difficulties due to religious, societal, and legal constraints of their time, it is fair to say that the modern world with its greater freedoms and advancements have benefited greatly due to the sacrifices of these innovators. Leaders and, uh, ladies and gentlemen, when fundamental human aspirations are expressed in universal principles and given form through shared values, and when moral and innovative leaders rise to give them practical substance, then we will see a profound change in our societies, our nations, and our world, and the dawn of a new era of peace and harmony will ensue. In particular, this will provide the key to resolving the three challenges facing America and the world that I outlined earlier. In order to meet the threat of global religious conflict, a new type of interfaith movement must appear, much like the civil rights movement of the 1960s, which addressed the injustices suffered by African Americans through an appeal to universal principles and values. This era should be one where people of every faith come together on the foundation of such principles and values in a new, great spiritual awakening. The promise that America makes to its citizens through the First Amendment must be extended to all the world's peoples through such an interfaith movement. On that common foundation, people of faith must stand together to uphold those principles and resist the violent appeal of religious extremism. I want to recognize here today the representatives of Nadlutal Ulama from Indonesia, one of our great major international interfaith partners. NU is the world's largest Muslim civic organization from the world's most populous Muslim country. 
NU promotes a moderate and peaceful vision of Islam that supports the Indo Indonesian polity based on unity and diversity and respect for religious freedoms. They act vigorously against Islamist extremists whose actions are contrary to Islam's core principles and mission for peace. Here in America, here in America, the Coalition for American Renewal is building a grassroots network among religious and civic leaders to revive the American founding spirit and apply it in practical social and educational initiatives around this nation. It is upholding First Amendment freedoms, particularly freedom of religion, which is the foundation for freedom of conscience. I also want to recognize the many other interfaith partners in this room here today from around the world, such as the International Center for Religion and Diplomacy, who are building peace through track to diplomacy in Pakistan and in the madrasas. On the second issue of Korea, with Korean unification, the foundation has taken an innovative approach that has altered the framework of the debate. To start with, we challenged the idea that unification was impossible or could not be achieved in our generations, but in many generations to come. Our Global Peace Leadership Conferences put it on the table that unification could potentially be imminent. Next, we took it out of the exclusive top-down realm of high international politics and made it into a popular bottom-up campaign that engaged ordinary Korean citizens. Through the Korea United campaign, we have engaged a broad-based coalition of 400 civic NGOs and grassroots civic movements around the nation of South Korea. With an innovative, with an innovative values approach to Korean uh, unification. Thank you very much. <laughs> Finally, and most important, we have shifted the debate away from the process of unification to a more focused discussion on the desired outcome of unification. What sort of nation would come about from the unification process? Governed by what principles? And what will that implication be for Koreans, Northeast Asia, and the world? Thus, for the first time, a grassroots movement for Korean unification based upon spiritual principles and values has emerged in Korea. Ultimately, unification based on such principles is urgently needed to resolve the threat of North Korean nuclear arms and nuclear proliferation. In Latin America, on the third issue, to, wor to, wor to work to promote greater integration within the Western Hemisphere between the Americas is already underway. Yesterday, eight former heads of state of Latin American countries with the committed support of several others met at the Carter Center to kick off the Americas Summit. This afternoon, they will announce the founding of the Latin American Presidential Mission. Building on earlier meetings in Paraguay in 2010 and in Brazil last year, and the Asuncion and Brasilia declarations that have emerged from those meetings, they are developing a blueprint for the closer integration of Latin American countries and a deeper connection between North, Central, and South America. The project is not just about diplomacy and economics. At its core is the affirmation and propagation of our common spiritual roots and of the same self-evident truths that informed America's founding. Upon such a foundation, we can experience a great hemispheric awakening and see the opening of a new era in the history of the Americas that will have a positive impact throughout 
not only the Americas, but throughout the world. In particular, the Western Hemisphere can establish societies that value human rights, freedoms, and responsibilities. These will stand as beacons for the aspirations of all people everywhere and bulwarks against authoritarian, totalitarian regimes that deny those very rights. Thank you. Significant initiatives are also being undertaken with many dedicated partners in Africa and Asia. There are distinguished African leaders here today who have worked with GPF to forge national campaigns of social cohesion that have stemmed from the post-election violence in Kenya. Also here are African religious and political leaders who have convened recently at the United Nations in Nairobi for the Africa Conference of, on Volunteer Action for Peace and Development. There, 25 partners launched Africa's own multinational regional approach to a Peace Corps engaging African youth in international service. In Asia, young people are being engaged in development in, in rural villages through the All Lights service program that brings solar power to communities that are off the grid. These efforts are bringing the light of hope and education to these impoverished communities and giving those communities a new step to the modern world. Ladies and gentlemen, the demands of this moment in history are great, but so are the opportunities to forge a bright future for humanity. Now is a time to revive America's founding vision and expand that dream onto a global stage through the universal vision of one family under God. This should be the clarion call of our age. In the words of my late father, who committed his entire life to the cause of peace, the time has come to tear down the man-made walls of race, culture, religion, and country and establish the peaceful, ideal world of God's cherished desire. The power of one human family united can quell the turmoil of conflict throughout the world from the strife of poverty of Africa to the conflict in the Middle East and the final remnant of the Cold War on the Korean Peninsula. As Americans and global citizens, let us make a solemn pledge to expand this dream to all people and lead the world to peace through the vision of one family under God. Then, as surely as light overcomes the darkness, an era of peace and prosperity will emerge from the depths of distrust and hatred, both at home and in the far corners of the world. Join with me and all of our partners and dare to dream the greatest dream of all, that we can live as one family under God and make this dream into a reality. Thank you so much for your tireless support and engagement in this great work. May God bless you and your families. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Moon. May we give him another round of applause.